Hello everyone, I'm Anurag Mishra, a senior quantum control engineer at QControl. We are currently in the near-term intermediate quantum era, or the NISC era. The noisy nature of current generation quantum computers makes quantum algorithms that require very low noise, such as the Shows algorithm, impractical. In recent year, hybrid quantum classical algorithms have emerged as the only practical alternative on these noisy quantum computers. Such algorithms are thought to provide some resistance to specific noises on devices. But how true is this claim with more realistic error models? Today, I will talk about the impact of noise on NISC error algorithms and how error robust controls designed using the QControl optimizer can suppress noise and enhance the performance of quantum algorithms. Let us discuss the very popular variational quantum eigensolver or the VQE algorithm, which has been used to find the ground state energy of small molecules, solve small condensed matter problems, etc. It is a prototypical NISC era hybrid quantum classical algorithm. A quantum computer prepares a parameterized quantum state called an ANSAS, and a classical optimizer optimizes a cost function which is generated from the quantum state. Starting from a random or a heuristic based set of parameters, the classical optimizer searches the parameter space using this hybrid classical quantum loop. The calculation stops when the cost function converges to an optimal value. When the cost function is the expectation value of an observable, the variational theorem guarantees that this optimal value is an upper bound on the minimum possible value of the observable. Tight bounds can be obtained by carefully choosing the ANSATs. To analyze the impact of noise on quantum algorithm, let us first consider how external noise sources interact with a quantum device at the pulse control level. Many superconducting qubit devices use the cross-resonance interaction to implement one and two qubit gates. The device control Hamiltonian can be broken down into two parts, the single qubit control and the two qubit control. We can manipulate these controls to implement various gates. In the cross-resonance model, all single qubit unitary gates can be created by combining the X90 pulse with Z rotation. The X90 pulse rotates the state vector by 90 degrees along the X axis on the block sphere. Z rotations rotate state vectors and combine their X and Y components. While the single qubit Hamiltonian does not contain any Z term, virtual Z rotations can be obtained by manipulating the X and the Y component of the control pulse omega. A two qubit cross resonance pulse called CR90 can be combined with the X90 pulse and a virtual Z rotation to create the C0 gate. The C0 gate, along with single qubit unitaries, forms a complete gate set for all quantum circuits. For details of the cross resonance and other superconducting qubit model, please refer to Kranz et al. These single and two qubit controls are represented by segmented functions. On each time segment, the control strength remains constant. Our cross-resonance simulator simulates each of these time segments in a time-ordered fashion. Solving either a unitary evolution or a Liu Williams simulation, depending on the interaction of qubits with the external sources of noise. So what exactly happens when we add noise to these cross-resonance simulations? Here, we consider a combination of two kinds of noises, a non-Hermitian qubit relaxation noise with timescale T1 and a Hermitian noise of constant strength, a coherent over-rotation noise. These noise shows up as decaying single qubit gate performance in benchmarks. Notice that we do not subject the two qubit cross-resonance channels to any noise. On the left, we show the result from repeated application of X180 pulses where the over-rotation errors accumulate and cause periodic oscillations in fidelity from the ideal state. On the right, randomized benchmarking shows TK in fidelity with increasing Clifford gate application. For these results, we have adjusted the noise parameters T1 and delta such that the results match the experimental results seen on an IBM superconducting device. Please refer to Carvalho et al. for all for more details about the experimental work. Can we improve benchmark performance under this noise? 
We remember that the X90 pulse is used to construct single and two qubit gates. A carefully designed X90 pulse can protect gates from various noise processes on the device. For this work, we used a model-based pulse optimizer provided by the QControl Boulder Opal software. In this model-based pulse optimization approach, we provide the details of the system Hamiltonian and the noise Hamiltonian to the optimizer and ask it to produce an optimal pulse that can implement the target gate. The Q control optimizer generates a cost function, which is a sum of two terms. One term measures the distance between the pulse and the target gate, and the second term measures the robustness of the pulse to the noise sources. The optimizer then applies state-of-the-art optimization techniques to find the optimal pulse. Here, we use the Q control optimizer to generate pulses that suppress the over-rotation noise. For more information about the optimizer, please refer to the to work done by Ball et al. Gates implemented using the robust pulses are completely immune to coherent over-rotation noise. The robust pulse completely cures the oscillation seen after repeated application of X180 pulses and the error per Clifford goes down by 2x in randomized benchmarking experiments. This is again in the line with results seen on an IBM superconducting device. The gates are now T1 limited. Let us now consider a concrete case, finding the ground state energy of the hydrogen molecule. We will use the CCSD ansatz over four molecular orbitals. We will use the parity qubit mapping to encode the electronic fermionic Hamiltonian to a qubit Hamiltonian. Two qubits were eliminated by qubit tapering algorithm, and we are left with a two qubit Hamiltonian. The CCSD ansatz required for this problem can be generated using an ansatz circuit of three parameters shown on the right. We diagonalized the two qubit Hamiltonian to find the exact ground state energy of the molecule. This value will serve as the benchmark for our VQE simulations. When we run the VQE loop for the hydrogen molecule problem, we start noticing the impact of the noise at the algorithm level. Using the existing approach with primitive pulses shows the performance reduction with the noise. The minimum energy found is far away from the true energy. This is represented by the lowest most point on the graph. Next, we look at a case where we run the simulations with T1 noise, but no over rotation noise. We call this the T1 limited case. Energy found by T1 limited VQE is very close to the true ground state energy. Next, we ran VQE with both kinds of noise and use the Q control robust pulse. As we see, the result is 93% closer to the true minima and matches the one found in the T1 limited case. Thus, we have verified again that the Q-control robust pulse completely suppresses the impact of over-rotation noise at the algorithm level. As a sneak preview, let me also show you the results obtained from the simulations on a simple toy model transport optimization problem. On the left, we see a graph describing the transport problem. Given a single depot with one vehicle, what is the optimal route to visit each node once? We solve this problem using the VQE algorithm with and without over rotation noise in the simulations. Q control robust pulse show a 200X enhancement with respect to the existing approach and again completely suppress over rotation noise. My colleague, Chris Bentley will discuss this detail in his next talk. In summary, we have shown that the coherent noise processes play an important role on realistic devices and hinder algorithmic performance. The Q control optimizer can create pulses which are robust to such noise and boost the performance of NISC error algorithms. In future, we want to enhance our simulation to also accurately capture the two qubit noise processes. We will also work towards reproducing these results directly on an actual hardware device. Thank you for watching this presentation from Q Control. If you have any questions, you can reach out to the team by going to qcontrol.com.